Hey guys! Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video where we're going to help you plan your adventures to Shanghai Disneyland. So what we're going to do, we're going to break this video into certain sections. The first part is we're going to talk about the planning stage. So this is going to be about flights, tickets, visas, apps. Where to stay. Yeah, all that type of stuff. And then later on in the video we'll talk about what happens when you actually arrive into China. So stuff like the visa process, what is it like when you get there. How to get to the hotel. And then when you get to the hotel, what's the check-in process like? And then we'll also show you stuff that's in Disney Town. So like places to eat for fussy eaters, that type of stuff as well. Let's start from the beginning. The first thing we did was check what visa we wanted to travel into China on because you cannot enter China from the UK on no visa right now. Hopefully they'll add it. They've added a few countries, but UK is not one of them. So that was where we started with which visa are we gonna go for? Yes, so what we looked at basically was what are our options? The first one, is probably the one that's put us off for quite some time which is the going straight into China and not going anywhere else and for that you do require a visa and that visa process isn't as straightforward as you'd like it to be because it does actually involve you having to go to the embassy to be able to get that visa to be able to travel to China and you have to leave your passport with them at the visa office and we had a few trips around the time so we knew that wasn't really going to work for us so we decided that well, let's make it a bigger trip. Let's make it a huge <laughs> trip. So we looked at other options and the one that we landed on was something called the 144 hour transit visa. Basically, it means you have to be traveling or transiting through China, whether that be going to another country and then to China and then back home, or whether it be that you go into China and onto another country and then to go back home. So the countries either side of your trip to China have to be different, they can't be the same. Yeah, exactly, that's it. So we went, basically on our trip, we went from China to Hong Kong. We could have gone from Hong Kong back home, but we didn't because we went for a crazy adventure <laughs> and we went down to Japan and then, well, up to Japan and then- Down to there, Singapore. Then down to Singapore, because <laughs> we're crazy like that. So when weighing up your different options for your visa, there are costs that are involved that you need to take into consideration. So if you are going directly for the visa, there is a cost involved. I remember it was around about 100 odd pounds. Yeah, I think it was like 200 for the three of us or something like that. It wasn't the cheapest option. No. By any means, but I think it lasts a while, it the does. one that we were looking at. Yeah. We didn't do enough research onto those because we very quickly decided that we weren't going to do that. So what we'll do is we'll leave the link for the website that we were looking at, which yes. is the China Embassy's website. Yeah, and it has all that information all in the there. It shows you different options that you can choose. And the pricing and everything. But the option that we chose, the transit visa, is completely free of charge. Free. So free is good. Free is always good. But you don't know you're getting in until you get there, which is a teeny bit of stress, but yes. well, it's fine. So with the transit visa, you do actually need to apply for that when you're in China. Whereas with the normal visa, you apply for that before you arrive and it's already in your passport. So that was a bit of a kind of a worry for us, wasn't it? Yeah, just making sure that we had all the information that's required for it and just being right. Yeah, you just have that feeling that something's gonna go wrong when you're there. But it, it, you won't, it's dead straightforward. We'll cover that off later on in the video so you can get an idea in terms of what that was like. But you do need to apply for it when you arrive in China. So we went on to Virgin Atlantic. And why did we do Virgin Atlantic? Because it was a direct flight from Heathrow to Shanghai and we could use air miles. And we had just enough at that time to be able to do a premium economy one-way flight for me, Gaz and Ollie. Now with this flight, you travel overnight. He says we travel overnight it's not overnight for your body clock. So, it's a morning flight and you land the following morning. So this is a flight you've got to sleep on. And we didn't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But what we decided to do is try and help that transition was to go premium economy. And as I said, we had rewards. So we use a reward voucher. Yeah, we no, we use points. Just points. Just points on, on that just one. Just points on that one. It was 97,500 points, which is quite steep one way, but it's a 13 hour-ish flight. And it and, is premium economy. And it was premium economy and we just was like, let's just pay the taxes on this one. Yes, and the taxes came to? 1,079 pound 43p. Right, so there you go. There's your first cost straight away to kind of take into consideration. That is a one-way flight, it's not return, but it gets you from Heathrow to Shanghai. So now that we've talked about flights, next thing we need to talk about? Hotels. Now we had no doubt in our mind that we were staying on site in Disney because we were not going into Shanghai at the time of making these plans. We were just going for the three days in Disneyland. Yes. And that are... did change. We did go into Shanghai, but we still stayed on site the whole time. And there are two options that if you're going on site, for anyone who isn't Disney and doesn't understand that, that just basically means that you're staying on Disney property. You're not going to like an external hotel like a Marriott or a Hilton or something like that. You're going for a Disney property. So there's two options. The first one is the Disneyland Hotel, 
and the second is the Thai Story Hotel, which was the option we went for because it looked way cooler and it was a lot cheaper. It was a lot cheaper, yes, exactly. And you still get the same perks. Yeah, so when we're looking at this, we were first of all, we needed to get an understanding on when we could book it. And from what we remember, it was roughly around about six months in advance it was to be able to book this hotel. Now, you couldn't get the ticket package at that point because tickets don't release till closer to the time, but staying on property guarantees you access to those tickets. Yes, so that's the thing you need to kind of take into consideration. Do you want a package that comes with a few other bits and pieces, or do you just want the hotel and purchase the ticket separately, which is the one we went for? We did. Just basically, it was six months out. We wanted to guarantee that we were staying at the hotel. We didn't want to wait that long. We just decided, well, we're going to buy the tickets anyway. It doesn't really make much difference. And it didn't make a difference on the cost of the tickets to do it as a package or a hotel. Yeah. We did get an early saver rate for booking so early yes which included our breakfast yeah that which was, was actually quite a decent breakfast and to book it we did it directly through the shanghai disney website it was dead straightforward however we found like a little backdoor route yeah if you go to the front page and you were looking it was all grayed out but then when you clicked on hotels and then went into the hotel page you could look for longer and you could get all the way to the payment page and then the payment kept failing and we didn't know what was going on no until it got to six months before and then it just went through fine. Yeah, so if you're looking to book the hotel and you are six months or more and you're having issues, that's probably the reason why, it's because you're over six months. Although we have looked recently and it does seem like that front page goes a little bit further than the six months at the moment. So the price, as you're all probably interested in, for four nights staying in the Toy Story Hotel at Shanghai came to a grand total of £1,081. Which we didn't think was too bad, considering they've only got two options and it's on site and it does get you a few extra little perks. So the main perks are the fact that you're guaranteed access to the parks. And that was good for us because it means we didn't have to purchase the tickets then. We could have saved a little bit more money and paid for it when we arrived, which is what we did. You also get early access, which means that you get an hour early access into the parks. And let me tell you, that hour is amazing. Tron, Full dust. Tron was a walk on. Yeah. We walked straight into Zootopia on day two. Yeah. It was more than worth it just for the hour. Yeah. Definitely. It was like deluxe after hours kind of level of crowd. It was amazing. It was really good. And then the third option, which we're not too sure is available anymore, but it basically gave us a free fast pass every day if we purchased tickets when we arrived. Yeah, and there was a set number of rides you could choose and you just went to one of them and they let you on. And I think they've got rid of that though now. Apparently it was gone when we went and they still offered still it. Still gave it, it us, so we were still like, ask. Yeah, exactly. And it also gives you your own entrance in the morning. With that exclusive access, the only thing to keep in mind is you don't go down Mickey Avenue, which is the centre, kind of like your main street, if you'd like. You do it's kind a short of, main street. Yes, you kind of go through the side. So we were lucky on the first day, they actually opened the main entrance. Like There's like a side entrance. A side main one. Yeah, and we managed to get in that. But on the second day, we weren't allowed to go in there. So it's usually in Disney Town, but they also might potentially open that side one like we did as well, which was really good for our first day. And the queues in the morning at the main entrance are insane. Yes, we would highly recommend getting there at least an hour before park open. And having that own entrance is just yeah. such a big big perk because i would not have liked to have queued in that that main queue would you no definitely not right so we've talked about hotels we've talked about flights yep tickets so you've got two options there's a one day ticket or a two day ticket which we went for the two day ticket because we knew we were having two days and we bought those directly from the toy story hotel concierge so with that they took our passports because they needed to associate it against an id and they also took our pictures to be able to associate it against the tickets now the good thing about doing it in the hotel is that they didn't have to take our pictures when we arrived at, D at disneyland the following day which was good yeah it did save a bit of time because we saw other people having it taken and it did seem to be taking quite a while yes just to let you know that if you want to purchase your tickets there they do accept international credit cards so you can use visa you can use mastercard to be able to purchase them tickets unlike other things which we'll talk about shortly so for the two days for the three of us was 535 pounds in total which is not too bad for disney tickets no i mean i was expecting to be more if you could if you like have a look at me take a look at walt disney world them tickets are far more expensive than what you're going to get there yeah so bearing in mind that's two adults one child for two days so we've got our flights we've got our hotel we've got our tickets what do we need now you need some money. We did quite a bit of research because we heard that credit cards in China can be quite difficult to use. Very temperamental from what we had been told. Yes, and to be honest, we did find it was some, there were some issues. So a little background for anyone who doesn't know, we, we went to four different countries within Asia and with each country we decided to draw out some money for each of them countries and China was no exception. So we got Chinese one. £100 worth 
Yes, and then we then decided we, what we wanted to do was trying to sort out Alipay. So if you don't know what Alipay is, it's like Apple Pay. It's kind of like Apple Pay, but there's more to you can it. order like Uber, their version of Uber through it, and yes. there's chats through it and stuff like it's. The whole life is kind of linked in this Alipay it's or, an or all WeChat in one. Pay. There's uh, two, isn't there? There's yes. WeChat Pay and Alipay. Oh. Now Alipay has allowed international cards to be registered to it now. Which and that's is only something that started this year, isn't mm -hmm. it? So yeah, you can take your like clarity card. Yeah, basically. Don't you, take your clarity card. No, well, don't so, ignore yeah, guys. Yeah, don't, don't take your clarity card. Yes, you, <laughs> you can take a Mastercard and a Visa card and associate it in the Alipay app now. For the majority of our transactions, we did use Alipay. And I will say, it's a brilliant app and we should have it over here because actual transactions were really straightforward. So they? much easier to use than anything else once we figured it out. <laughs> once it worked. Because we have a Clarity card, Halifax Clarity each. card. One each. We have one each. And basically because when you go to the likes of the States, the exchange rate is much better than a standard card. That is a MasterCard. And we linked it to Alipay. And once we arrived and we tried to make a transaction, it didn't work. And the reason we think it didn't work was because the two-step verification was going through to the app. By the time you'd opened the Halifax app, said, yes, this is me, and gone back to Alipay. Alipay had gone, nah, that, you, you took too long. You took too long because you have to go out of the app to, to, to verify to then go back into the app. But it was just taking a long time to load. Yeah, so it failed all the time. So we were just like, oh. But we also did try to pay chip and pin yes. with the Clarity and that, that wouldn't work, work either. either. It did, the Clarity didn't work a single time. In, no. Apart from for the tickets. Yeah, the tickets worked, yeah. The tickets at Concierge were the only thing but we were like able to But we tried to buy. pay for food and stuff like that. Nope. It didn't work. So luckily, past Gaz and Ange were legends. Well... Past Gaz was, because I had no I idea. I am a was catastrophe thinker. So I was like, what could potentially go wrong? We have a MasterCard. I'll tell you what, let me get a Visa card as well, <laughs> just in case we have any issues. So I signed up for Revolut. And oh boy, a week glad that I did. I don't know what we'd have done. I don't know what we'd have done. <laughs> Genuinely. So like glad. if there's nothing else to go there, I don't know what we'd have done, because yeah. we would have run out of money. Yeah. So we loaded that up, and the two-step verification through Revolut was quicker. Yes, we paid a little bit more in terms of the exchange rates and stuff like that, but still we were able to use it. So my recommendation would be, don't just rely on one credit card, make sure you have a few to be able to register it with Alipay. And you are gonna need Alipay because they're just not used to having international credit cards out there. No. Also, when it comes to do chip and pin, they ask you for a six digit number, not a four digit number. But just put your four digit pin in. Yeah, press return. That's fine. And the numbers are all jiggled up as well. I don't know why, it's like a test. So now that we've got the money, the other thing that we need to take care of is your phone. Because as a lot of people know, China doesn't allow a lot of apps that you use on a daily basis over here. They have a firewall known, yes. known as the Great Firewall of China. As if you've watched any YouTube at all, you'll know about a VPN because every man and his dog's flogging a VPN at the minute. And if you're interested in VPN, we also have no VPN in the description. There is an affiliate code and you can get some discount off it if you want to chat that out. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. <laughs> so yeah, so with no VPN, what it basically does is it changes your location. So even though you're in China, you can say, actually, no, I'm not in China mobile phone. I am in the United Kingdom. And then all the apps work like they would do at home. And you can't activate once you're there. Yeah, they know. It they're knows. Like, they're like, nah, mate, you can't activate that over here. So you've got to make sure you have the VPN and it is active on your phone before you fly. The only things that do work in China, with even if you've got even through the firewalls on, is basically like your Apple stuff. So your Apple Maps still work, your iMessage still works. But if you're looking to use the likes of WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google Maps, anything Google related, you just can't do it. So you've got that, you've got the VPN, but obviously you need a data plan and you do not want to use your current data plan from a UK provider over in China. Mine was wow. like seven pounds a day for a hundred meg. It was like I think it was like eight wasn't it? pound on O2 for a megabyte. Was one it a, megabyte. Was it not it was, no, it was something ridiculous. It was a lot. It would have cost us like three, four hundred pounds. Thousand pounds. You think? Oh yeah, hundred percent. So we did a load of research and we came up with a few options and we settled on Holofly. Yes. So there are a few that are on there. I think Aeroflow, Aeroflow. was another Aeroflow. one. Aeroflow. Aeroflow is another one. But with Aeroflow you have to purchase a set data, so it's like 100 gig, 50 gig, 20 gig, 10 gig. Whereas with Holofly, it's just unlimited. Now- And we, we prefer that just because you never know. You never like, know, exactly. We never know what we're up to. We no. just use our phones and we never think about it. So we'd rather just know that we're not gonna get charged a fortune. Exactly, and it was 5G data speeds, 
which is brilliant. You don't get a number associated with it. So when we set up the eSIM cards, we actually turned off our own SIM cards, which basically meant that we didn't get any text messages whilst we were away. I messages and everything came through WhatsApps. It was just actual text actual mis- phone calls, yeah. text messages, voicemails, yeah. all that. Like we turned it all off because we didn't want to we get did not charged. want any of those charges. Yeah, that did serve us a bit of an issue further down the line because they blocked my card in Singapore. And we couldn't work out why it wasn't. And it was just that he'd got a text saying, was this you? Message yes or no. And because he didn't message no, they just blocked it. Yeah, exactly. So that's something to keep in mind that potentially you might need to turn it on. So you make sure you turn your voicemail off. Because if you get a phone call, even if you don't answer, and it goes through to voicemail, they're still going to charge you. So it's just stuff like that, really. It was great. We used that the whole trip. Yeah, and I think altogether for that, I think it was like £17 for, um, for the four days when we're there. So I think it was good value. Yeah, it, it was just, you didn't have to it worked think about anything because Alipay, you, you do need internet for. So, like, if you're going to use Alipay, you, you probably need do need to an get eSIM. An There's three other apps that I'd recommend to download. So you've got the Holyfly, you've got NordVPN. The other three ones that I'd recommend would be to make sure that you get Apple Maps, not Google Maps. And the reason being, Google Maps doesn't align correctly. So even when you were trying to use it, <laughs> still we shapes like, street, mate, yeah. you're all the way down there. It definitely wasn't right. So if you've got an iPhone, Apple Maps is going to be your way forward and you want to try and cache the maps offline because if you lose data connection, you want to still be able to make sure you know where you are. The next app I'd recommend would be a Translate app. Google Translate worked brilliantly for us. Yes, and again, you need to take the Chinese option and download it because again, if you run out of internet and you need to be able to talk to someone, you need to make sure that it can dictate quite well. So I forgot to do that and it was fine on my phone still. Yeah, like right. the Holofly didn't. I did not lose connection with yeah. it. I was really impressed with it, actually. This is me catastrophe thinking again. Yeah. Like, what happens if the world ends and we need to talk to somebody? <laughs> and then the last app is a tipping app. Now, I can't actually remember the name of it, so I'll leave it up in the top corner there. But that was really good because it gives you an idea in terms of do you need to tip taxi drivers? What about people that clean your room? All different type of things, really. It was just a quick glance because tipping in Japan, for example, is actually classed as quite rude. So we wanted to make sure that we were tipping we the right, anyone. depending on the culture. Yeah. So those are the three other apps that I recommend to download. I've got one more that you absolutely need to download, the Shanghai Disneyland app. Oh yeah, good point, actually. <laughs> that <laughs> that's is, a pretty important that, one. That's a pretty important one. So as soon as you get in there, link to the app. Yes. Or before you even get in there, you need to link your tickets once yeah. you've got them. Because you, if you want to make any purchases, so like we have like standby passes, There's if you're wanting to make any premier access purchases, all that type of stuff, it's all done directly through the Disneyland app. So standby pass for anyone that doesn't know, out in Asia, they have this standby pass where you have to get like, it's like a virtual queue, but it's to the line. Yes. So you go at a set time for the queue. Yeah, exactly. It's a queue for the queue. Yeah, it is. It's (laughs) It's a virtual queue for the queue. And then with Premier Access, it's similar to Lightning Lane, if you're familiar with it in in the US. You can actually link your card to that as well, and that did work, didn't it? it did. Oh, yeah, that was the other thing it worked for, actually. Clarity did work on that. Right, so we talked about what apps you need to download, your money, your hotel, your tickets, pretty much everything beforehand. Is there anything we've missed? I don't think so. No? No. So when you've booked all of that, no, there is something we've missed. Make sure you put your middle name, (laughs) if you have it on your passport, on all your documentation. Your hotel, your flight out of Shanghai, everything. Yes. They do not like it if you do not have your middle name on, as we came to discover. Match your passport. Whatever is on your passport is what you put into your hotel, what you put into your flight information. Everything has to be identical. Now, we got away with it. Thank goodness. Yes. But they they really were not happy that we'd not put up. Gaz forgot to put Oliver's middle name on. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Chuck me under the bus. Absolutely, it was your fault. You, that was the one flight you booked and you didn't put his middle name on it. Can you tell? She was a little <laughs> bit angry at the time over this. I was like, I hadn't, neither of us had noticed though no, until we didn't. We didn't. the guy went, passport not match. I yeah. was like, oh, we'll, no. We'll talk about this visa process in a second, but what I'd recommend to do is to get all the documentation printed all out because yes. when you come to actually arrive into China, it's just much easier rather than having to get your phone and scroll and pass it to them and stuff like that. Just to have it all on a piece of paper to be able to go, this is all the information you require was so much better. We talked about the whole booking side of it and in terms of the cost for everything that we've done so far. Now we're going to go and have a look at what happens when you actually go to China. 
So the first thing is arriving at Heathrow Airport, what you need to make sure you tell them if you're doing the 144 hour visa, you need to tell them at check-in because they need to contact China to let them know. They are basically responsible, and by them I mean Virgin, are responsible for telling China that these people are coming here on the 144 hour visa. So you have to tell them when you do the bag drop. Yes. And hopefully they know what they're talking about, unlike the time that we went and they haven't got a clue. Well, she kind of knew what the visa was. She yeah. just wasn't convinced that because Hong Kong is part of China and that Hong Kong was an acceptable country. Now it is. Yes. Any of the special administrative regions are acceptable third countries. Yes. Now, for anyone who's watching from China, we're not saying that Hong Kong is another country. We're just saying it's classed as this visa process as another country to be able to get the visa process approved as the comments told us <laughs> we we know hundreds of comments we know <laughs> so when we were on the plane they came around with the arrival cards now for us that wasn't the right card for the 144 hour visa that is just for if you've already got a visa yes in your passport if you're going for the 144 hour visa you need an arrival and departure card not an arrival card and they're available once you get into the airport at the 144 hour section yes it's easily signposted you just look up at the top it says 144 hour visa it's in english yes and you basically before you go into the hall you need to scan your fingers and as soon as you scan your fingers you get given a piece of paper and your head to the sign that says 145 hour visa. We then filled out the arrival and departure form. We then headed over to the desk. They then asked for the information that you need as part of the 144 hour visa. So what that is, is you need to have confirmation that you are staying within Shanghai. Now one stipulation we didn't actually mention as part of the 145 hour visa is you're not allowed to leave the district that you go into. So, so we couldn't leave Shanghai. We yes. had to stay within Shanghai. Yeah, so if you're thinking about doing Shanghai and Beijing on one trip, you can't do it on the 144 hour visa unless you're going out of the country and then back into the country and then back out again. But that would be like 244 hour visas that are separate. And we don't know if there's any timeline in between that. So do your own research. That isn't something we needed to do. So we don't know the answer to that. So you need to have the information in terms of the hotel and making sure that it was in the district. So within Shanghai. And also you need to make sure that you have your outbound flight information. A few other things when we arrived in that hall, they do do temperature checking mm -hmm. as Ange found out. Didn't they? Yes, they do. Yeah. I'm a slightly warmer human being than normal people. Yes, exactly. As it flagged up. So just to keep Keep that in mind that they are doing temperature checks and once you get through the most daunting part which is the visa process you then need to get to the hotel it's it's dead easy it is it, but it is like for stress heads like us too yeah. like it is a little bit stressful so we just followed the signs for the taxi rank yes at the hotel like the official airport taxis don't get in a random taxi yeah just don't do it because you don't know if the license you don't know if it's, it's fully signposted yeah. to be fair for the taxi rank and you can tell it's a taxi rank because it's just basically it snakes around so you kind of get an idea and i'm guessing when it's during peak time it'll be quite busy there but as Anne says as we kind of walk towards that taxi rank we were stopped by a few people asking if we wanted a taxi so one was like an official building for like a private coach transfer yeah now that was like triple the price yeah, exactly. of what the taxi ended up being. And Gaz was like, yeah, we'll just get in. And I was like, that's expensive. Yeah, keep walking. Like, yeah. let's just follow the signs, do what everyone's told us to do on all the vlogs we've watched and keep walking. Do not get in this private coach. No, exactly. Don't do it, Gaz. Go with Ange. We also know that some people would like to have a look at public transport. We did briefly look at it, but because of the flight and how long it was going to be and the fact that we had luggage and we also have a little lad with us, we decided it would best us to get a taxi. And from what we remember, if you get on the train, you have to go past Disneyland and then transfer over and it takes roughly about an hour. The taxi only actually took us 15 minutes. It was supposed to take longer. In terms of it was supposed to take longer, the taxi driver was rapid. <laughs> I'd put a caveat to say between 15 and 25 minutes because I do think he shaved off about 10. He definitely did because Google Maps definitely said it was 20, or Apple Maps said it was 20 something minutes. He was fast. He was, I have never been in such a crazy taxi in all my life. Uh, he got us there safe. And we got <laughs> more time in Disney. So cheers, taxi driver. Altogether, if you want to know a rough price, so it came in at 90 yen. So what's that roughly? About nine pounds. Roughly, yeah, roughly Just about over nine, nine pounds. Quid. Other things in terms of taxis, if you want to know, and uh, the taxi journey to get into Shanghai city centre, from the Toy Story Hotel was roughly around about 35 minutes. And again, the cost for that was about 18 pounds. So it wasn't too bad. The ho the Toy Story Hotel staff told us we wouldn't be able to use DD, Which is their version of Uber. Which is, yeah. And we knew that we could, but we just listened to and her and let her call a taxi. It. We just didn't check. We're like, oh, okay. And then 
But you can, you can use you DD. Can. And I would probably recommend that because at least then you can see where the taxi is. You can point in the right direction. And you've got the price. Yeah. Like. But one genius thing that Angie did going back to the taxi when we arrived into Shanghai Airport is she printed off this massive sign just in well, case the taxi driver that was, was also blind. <laughs> so I went and we did a lot of research through TDR Explorer yeah. beforehand. And he said, for Shanghai, you need to print your hotel name in Chinese because the taxi drivers don't speak English at all. Yeah. I'm glad we did, because it did make it easier. I just showed him this little sign that I copy and pasted from TDR's website, which printed A4 size. Yes, so we're gonna leave that link down to the different hotels, the two hotels for you to be able to print it out. It's also got another one, hasn't it? It's got yeah, I think it's party. got a Marriott one. Yes, yeah, so there's there's a few on there. And also, if you, have, if you are thinking about going over to Shanghai Disneyland, or Asia in general, go and check out Chris's channel, and also go and check out his, his blog and his website, because the information that I've been on that helped us out massively for this trip yeah we basically planned our trip through it yeah. and another thing as well make sure you have your google translate app ready at the taxi rank because there wasn't a lot of english spoken there at that was taxi none. rank. yeah there was no none at all yeah and yeah. It, so he even asked someone to help him and they didn't have it either so we ended up using google translate so i'd probably say if there's ever a time that you're going to use it it probably is going to be in that situation so 15 minutes later with the craziest taxi driver in the world yeah we arrived at the toy story hotel and we had seven hours till check-in. Yes, exactly. And we were all dead on our feet already by this point. So we went and spoke to them, we checked in, and they said, come back earlier, and we'll try and get your room ready earlier. Yeah. Now, check-in's 3 p.m., and they did manage to get us in at about 2 p.m., so it wasn't, like, super early. Yeah, so you've got to keep in mind, like, I think altogether we were up for around about 26 hours, so keep that in mind when it comes to booking it, that you might want to actually add on a day before in terms of your hotel so it's ready for you when you arrive. I had emailed them prior to going to say, hey, like what are the chances of us getting an early check-in? And they were just like, you have to check on arrival. We cannot confirm that over email. Yeah, so if you think you're gonna be dead on your feet, then potentially you might wanna have a look at that option. But I would for sure email them and let them know so they don't mark you as a no-show. And then for the rest of the day, whilst we were waiting, we needed to pass the time. So we headed over to Disney Town because we didn't wanna go into the um, we didn't want to go into the park because we knew we'd be a little bit jet lagged. We wanted our first experience to be fresh. So actually, we said there was one day and two day tickets. We have missed an option, yes. which they tried to sell us when we got there. They do a half day ticket. Yeah, that's true actually, I forgot about that. Yeah, I just remembered this yeah, moment. Yeah, because they literally. said, they, they went, you can go to the park like, if you want. And we like went, mm. We, was, we, we were very tempted, <laughs> we were so close. but we just wanted that first time to be fresh, for it to be what we wanted it to be, Yeah. and it just made sense then it not to do it that I'm day. I'm so glad we didn't do it that yeah. day, but we very nearly did. We have now arrived to the point where we're going to go into Disneyland, so you're probably going to want to know what rides you want to go on first, you're going to want to know about Premier Access, Zootopia, how you get into that land, and we've got all of that covered for you in that video right there. Go and check that out, guys. Until next time. We'll see you on the next adventure. Catch you later. Bye.